Yeah, 52 FPS, uh, 1920 by 1080. Um, it's custom settings. I actually don't know what settings that is. So let me actually take a look here. Wait for it to load. I think it was, I think it was set to low, which is like I said, kind of more or less what you can expect from a laptop like this. So let me go to graphics and, um, what? What? High, medium, ultra? No. 51 FPS on a $450 laptop? Are you nuts? There is a reason why I did the intro the way I did. I was legitimately surprised. I guess a part of me thought that this, it's, it's Lenovo L340 Gaming. While the specs look good on paper, it just didn't translate that $445 shipped to my door when that, that kind of experience. We're talking AAA titles are only two years old. High settings, 1080p, 50 FPS plus. We're talking World of Warcraft, 70 plus people around on a rare spawn world boss. 30 to 40 FPS level seven settings, which that's a hard feat to do. Anybody that plays WoW on even high-end systems know that's hard to do. So I'm gonna save you the trouble of watching the entire video and hopefully I cut it pretty short. If you have $450, $500 in FIAS on sale, just buy it. If you have any use for it, just buy it. There's cons. So if you wanna hear about the cons, then definitely watch the video because I do talk about it or fast forward to the end. But let me let me tell you about this laptop but to do so you do have to stay tuned to learn more so without further ado let's take a look at the sort of unboxing overview performance review and review of the Lenovo L340 15 inch guess gaming laptop that I bought for $445 including tax and shipping right to my door let's go ahead and Open it up. So the, let's talk about the general specs. It's a Core i5 9300H. H or HF, I can't remember. It doesn't really matter. I think it's an HF because I remember reading about how the battery life is trash on it, but it's a gaming laptop. It's not meant for battery life. It has eight gigs of memory. It has a 256 gig NVMe SSD. And we have here a power brick that has 135 watts with a standard Lenovo connector. We got some nice soft foam, which hopefully prevent it from getting damaged during shipping. And by the way, this is brand new. This is not refurbished. Although refurbished, it would still be a good deal. So let's spin around here. Is this on or is this just blue? I think it's blue finishing. Okay. So we have a 15.6 inch screen. We have the GeForce GTX 1650, and that's going to be a, a four gig GDDR6 with a quad core eight thread CPU. So taking a quick look at the IO, we have power adapters, the standard Lenovo, it's 135 watts, actual ethernet, HDMI, two USB type C's, headphone microphone, and a USB type C, a ton of IO. Like, that is a lot of I.O. And when you go look at the other side, uh, yeah, that's why there's a ton of I.O. Um, doesn't look like it has any memory card read or anything like that, which is fine. But let's go ahead and upgrade the memory. So we're gonna go ahead and get our screwdriver here. It looks like, yep, this will work with all of them. Perfect. Just gotta be careful to make sure that none of these are like a weird size. So we kinda wanna make sure we Compare them. Perfect. Perfect. And we have these front four. That's machined in there a little bit tighter. These might be a little bit of a different size. We'll see here. 
Uh, no, it all be the same size. So that's definitely a big plus. Good job there, Lenovo. Now, I do have high hopes for thermals given my Legion 5, but then I've realized like this is a low end SKU, so packing all this hardware <laughs> into a lower end SKU, maybe not. We'll take a look at the thermal solution and when we actually do some testing, we'll know just how uh, well it does perform. Now we have all the screws out. I also took the middle screw out. Don't forget about that one. We can go ahead and find a, a seam of some sort here. Let's try the corner. Oh, come on. There we go. Perfect. Don't want to bend it, but this one is definitely in there pretty good. Okay, so I'm already not a fan of this cooling solution. So we have the CPU here, I guess. You have CPU and GPU, I don't know which order it is in. I don't think it's all that important, but one heat pipe to go over both. I'm going to guess right now that that is not gonna, probably the CPU is probably gonna suffer. For whatever reason, the GPUs never suffer in these, I don't know why, but, um, and also it's like, it's probably not blowing out here, it's probably intaking here, and it's blowing out this way, and I guess maybe when you have this all the way open, it maybe. No, I mean, you have a two and a half dry slot with no SATA connectors to connect to. Uh, I, I mean, why? Why even put this in if you're not, like I don't see anywhere on the board offhand, I, I don't see it. Uh, you do, so looking at the SSD here, is an MVME, yes it is. Uh, model number, we're gonna do this in phonetic, Mike Zulu dash Alpha Lima Quebec 2560. The wireless card's an Intel card, I think the SSD was Samsung. 956 Oscar, or that could be a zero, 9560 November Golf Whiskey. So you have that. Uh, battery is 3900 milliamps or 44 watt hours. That's actually not very impressive to be 100% honest, but look at the memory here and we're gonna go ahead and upgrade the memory I'm gonna get what did I do with the other stick oh wait um we have a slight problem so this has one slot that's incredibly disappointing that's that's really really disappointing all right well I guess let's just get this back together and I don't know. I, I mean, I guess that's pretty good for the price, but I really expected another slot. I really did. And uh, that's that's pretty disappointing. They could not include a second slot. I think this goes on this way. I am about as far away, at least my microphone is, from what you would expect. And this is, I believe, yes, it is all the way up. Not bad. Way better than like standard 2x2 two two speakers that I see. I think that's serviceable. I actually have to try to talk over this. That's roughly how loud it is. But let's talk about the elephant in the room. This trackpad is not great. It just, it doesn't track that well. Um, I'm just not a fan of it. Like my Lenovo tracks a fair bit better when I do have to use it. This seems to get stuck a lot. Um, I don't like the feel to it. The scroll is way too fast on some applications. Granted, I can most likely fix that, but I am not a fan of this. That being said, I don't like to use trackpads for daily workloads. I'm a standalone mouse. As for the keyboard, let's go ahead and uh, let's open up some WordPad here and give you guys my thoughts on the keyboard. So the keyboard, not really mushy, not a lot of, not a lot of flex in, the, in these keys here. So, you know, when I press like the side of a key, it's, it's definitely solid. I, I mean, it's not a great keyboard, but um, you know, here, let's, uh, let's see how well I do. I'll give you guys another turn here and hey, how are you doing? So I had one, I don't, I don't type right. So this feels like my Lenovo Legion laptop. So. The keyboard's pretty solid. I don't have too big qualms with this. Um, 
Let me see, is it control? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so brightness also, I mean, I have lights on, but this is not a very highly bright, brightly lit screen. It's probably 250 max. I would be surprised if it's over 300 nits. Um, so it's probably not gonna do great outdoors, but that being said, that's not what it's made for. What it is made for is gaming and some productivity. So let's just see in this stock configuration how well it does. So now we're gonna go ahead and do a blender render here and let's check thermals because that's definitely something that I was a little bit concerned about. And let's go ahead and reset. We're not gonna watch this all the way through, but we wanna watch core clock speed and also thermals and outputs and everything. So we're floating between like 3.0 and 3.6, all the way up to 3.9. Let's take a look at the power output here. So that's gonna be pretty important. Really good on the thermals. In upper 70s, lower 80s. Um, was uh, was not expecting that. You, you know, up to about 90 is usually my concern here. So just kind of note, I used the wrong power adapter, and this was actually spiking up to 55, and it was settling at 35. So that same Lenovo like plug, but it, it was 180 watts. So just be careful. Make sure you're using one that's rated, or else it might actually run a fair bit hotter. Uh, so we're looking at 84 at the top. We're looking at about a oops, we're looking at about a sustained load of 35 watts peak load, like 43. But uh, let's look at our CPU here. So now this is Blender, so it's not going to necessarily cap out like it will in say Cinebench R20. So let's go ahead and drop off that and let's open up R20. So we'll go here, open that. And we want to kind of see what kind of behavior we can we can expect here. So let's go ahead and reset statistics again. We are floating around like four gigahertz. Let's see if this is actually going yet. Yes, so we have all eight threads going. So we're in that four gigahertz range. Okay, now we're dropping off a little bit. Temp squad is about 87. Again, I'm not too worried about it. Um, remember, it's only at 2400 megahertz. That's all this supports. Uh, we're still at that. Okay, now we just drop down to about 30, 33 watts. You can see the, the CPU temp has dropped a fair bit. Um, so that's probably going to, as you see, it's going to kind of level off. That core one seems to be the one that's always the hottest. But we're at about 33. And that honestly is rock solid. So let's take a look at the laptop as a whole to dive a little bit deeper to the specs I talked about earlier. We have a Core i5-9300HF, that F means no integrated graphics, 2.4 gigahertz base, 4.0 gigahertz boost, four cores, eight threads, essentially, as you'll find out or saw earlier, it's an i7-6700HQ, except probably a little faster, a little more single thread performance. Has a single eight gig stick of DDR4, 2400 megahertz, and only has one slot, still a big light down there. Has a GTX 1650 a 4 gig GDDR6, not super, less CUDA cores. It's basically 1650, but with um, GDDR6 memory. Despite what I might say in the conclusion, I well, because I'm filming this last, the display is IPS, 60 hertz, 1080p, 45% color gambit, and it is 250 nits, nits brightness, roughly, like 253. We're looking at 135 watt power brick. I, 256 gig NVMe SSD and all this for $445 shipped to my door, including taxes. So we have to start out with Cinebench. That's, that's always my stable. So we have the Legion 5, we have the Nitro 5 also. Uh, we have some desktop processors that were kind of in the same ballpark. And basically this performs a little bit better than the desktop i3 variant bit lower on a single thread performance, a little bit better on the multi-core performance, but overall it actually does not finish last in all my recent tests that I've done. And looking at Blender BMW, again, it scores a little bit better than the desktop i3 variant. So obviously the i3 actually performs better if you think about it because it doesn't have hyper threading, it only loses by a little bit. But it's still capable like basic video editor um, Blender was a little bit under eight minutes on export, which honestly for a laptop of this caliper, I find that to be very impressive. But let's be honest, you came here for gaming performance. And I'm happy to announce that this laptop is capable of playing the F1 series, Forza Horizon 4, and The Division 2, 
basically around that 50 FPS or higher average on high settings. Which means most of your AAA title you should be able to play 1080p medium high settings with that good frame rate. Now mind you, we're talking $445 with the stock configuration. Now I have some good news and I have some bad news. The bad news is I do not have any World of Warcraft benchmarks. The good news is, well let me show you the good news. I'm currently downloading this game so I'm pretty confident with the information I have in my conclusion. Let's see what's going on. I'm in Ice Crown, okay? I'm downloading and installing game. I'm level seven settings. Uh, let's throw some 2X anti-aliasing in there. It'll take a little bit of a performance, but not much. That's usually what I play with two or four. Uh, I think I do play with 2X. The games I tested, so you're seeing the integrating camera, you're seeing the microphone, so what it sounds like. The game I tested, this is comparable to the $400 ultra budget gaming PC that I built. Slightly above in some cases, right? However, this includes a monitor. This includes, you know, a keyboard, speakers that don't absolutely suck, a built in microphone that actually sounds half decent, integrated webcam. And granted, yeah, it only has 8 gigs of RAM, not 16. You know, that's only a $50 upgrade. So, you know, you look at the touchpad's not great. The memory, you have to upgrade one stick, which kind of stinks. The peak brightness is probably 250 nits best. The battery life's probably going to be no better than like two or three hours. But man, just, just look at this. So I'm getting 50 plus FPS with probably 40 people around about to kill this rare spawn. Level 7 settings. And that's a pretty good feat because WoW is very much single threaded, right? So that having decent single thread performance, enough graphics power, the kind of a company it is definitely key. So to be honest, this is by far the most impressive, bar none, gaming device I have personally ever used. And that's a pretty bold statement. Because I'm going to call this, personally, I'm going to say it's like a $500 laptop. I mean, it's but it's used by the box at 450 And the title's going to say 450 But I think you throw 50 bucks at it, it's going to be good for some time. It's good for content, you know, light content work, light to mid-level gaming. You know, it gets the job done, especially if you're an esports player or you play games like World of Warcraft. This definitely hits it there. So as we kind of finish up here... Um, a couple things I've come down the road. A lot more reviews coming down the road. Definitely a big thing there. I have a hundred and eighty dollar, yes, a hundred eighty dollar laptop review coming. Um, that's actually including the upgrades I'm doing to it. I have, I think a couple. I, don't, I think this is going up pretty soon. So I think I have a couple other videos going up. I just haven't got any order down yet. But if you do like this video, definitely the like button. Share it with anybody you think could be beneficial to. Obviously. Um, and we're going to kind of close it out here just seeing how well the performance we can expect to be on this situation, which is we have like 30, 40, 50 people around us, and we're about to kill basically a world boss. So let's, uh, let's stay tuned and see how well it does. I cannot attack that target. I cannot attack that. Oh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna die here. Yeah, I don't want to die. So, wow, still in the 30 FPS range. That was impressive. I expected to be a complete slideshow with 50, 60 people around me killing this thing all at once. So. There you have it. I'm going to try to get you links to buy something like this or this laptop. Hopefully you can find it at the same price. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike if you dislike. Leave a comment. Get subscribed. Buy stuff for me. If this is on Best Buy, then buy it from there. Otherwise, Amazon, because I do get a small kickback from that. So do keep that in mind. And as always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech. And I'll see you all later on down the road.